Here we are the next morning. And we just need to pull all these off of here. What you'll want to do is cut off this excess. Try not to cut yourself in the process. So now that we have this cut off, we're gonna run out into the shop on the belt grinder and we're gonna sand this edge down so it essentially looks like one piece of leather. So out we go. So right now I've got a 36 grit belt on here and I'm going to use this belt just to remove the bulk of the material. Once I'm done with the 36 I'll put a 120 on and then I'll use that to smooth the edge down a little bit. So I put a little recurve here in the sheath to kind of mimic the shape of the knife. And because I have a thick welt, I was able to do that and I'll still have enough room to come in for the stitching. All right, here we are back down on the workbench. And what we need to do is draw a line for our stitching. So normally from the edge you'll want to come over, you know, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch or so. And then just scribe a line in here. So that way you can see where your stitching is going to be. And then once I've done that, I'm going to create a groove in here for my thread to go into. So we're going to go with the groover here again. And then we just want to match up our line with the, where the groove is going to cut. That looks good. And then just go through and Cut out your line. You want to stop a little bit before that corner just so you don't go past and make the sheath look horrible. And you're also going to want to do this on the other side. Except when I do that, I usually wait until after I've punched my holes. Just in case for some reason your holes might come off at a little bit of an angle. And then while we're here, I'm going to cut all this little excess leather off of here from the from the sanding. I'm going to want to run through here. Actually, going to take a piece of leather and put it behind here so this sits up straight. I'm going to start up in the corner. And I'm not going to punch all the way through. I'm just going to set all my holes so I can see where they're going to hit. 
And if I need to make any adjustments, then I can do it now instead of when the, the holes are punched all the way through. And another way you can do this is once you have your holes set, you can go out to your drill press and just drill the holes through. And this actually looks like it's going to be perfect. Ends right at the end. So my punches aren't deep enough to go all the way through, so I'm going to have to run outside on the drill press and finish up these holes. Not entirely sure what size this bit is, but it's small. When I do this, I have a piece of wood that I've cut out a little section for the, the uh, belt strap to fall into. That way this sits perfectly straight. side okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the groove in this back side looks like the holes match up really nicely so before we stitch what we need to do is fill in these areas that we remove the die and then also along the edge and it probably wouldn't hurt just to put another quick coat And we'll just let this dry for a little bit. So let's get this thing stitched up. What I typically do to determine how much thread I need is I will follow the stitch line and go a little bit past and then I will multiply that by six. It really depends on the thickness but when I've got three thicker pieces of leather, six is usually the magic number. So two, three, four, five, and six. And the thing you don't want is to short yourself on the thread. It's not the end of the world, you can still make it work. You just have to add a, another piece to it. But I would rather waste a little bit than be short. And it doesn't really matter which side you start from. You can start at the tip and work your way up to the heel, or you can start at the heel and work your way down to the tip. So I've got this little stitching pony that I made. It works all right. I'm sure there's better out there, but this is a lot less expensive than the other ones. So what you wanna do is pop this through here, put your needles together, and then pull it up until it's centered like that and then you'll go up to the next hole put your left one through pull them up like that because you want to get this needle underneath your thread so you'll pop that through like that and then what I do is I once your needle pops through the other side I'll take the thread wrap it underneath the needle and back forward 
and then I pull these first ones are a little harder to get because the thread hasn't pushed down yet anyway and then you you pull and then I will pull down on this side up on this side to give it a nice a nice tight cinch on there and then essentially all you're doing is working your way all the way to the top and one other thing you want to do is when you get this needle through give this thread a little pull over here just to ensure that you haven't stuck this needle through your thread and sometimes these get a little tight so that's when it's good to have some pliers you can pull those through All right, so once you get to the top up here, then you'll want to move back one or two holes. And you usually want to do it opposite of the way you stitched before. So if we did this one first, we're going to want to do our left hand first going back through. So I like to keep these tight. So I'll pull this tight here pop that through there and it's most likely going to be hard to get through so grab your pliers and then pull it through and snug it up and just watch your thread so it kind of matches up so it looks good and then we pulled this side up before so we'll pull it down this time and then we'll pull push this side through And then we want these to end on the back side. So we'll leave that one there. And then we're gonna poke this one through one more time. Pull it nice and tight. And then we just have to cut and burn the threads. And as you can see, we don't have too much waste. It's a little more than I normally have, but again, it's better to have too much than not enough. So I'll just come in here and snip these off. Left about a quarter of an inch. You can leave about eight to a quarter of an inch. Snip those a little closer. There we go. And then take your thread zapper or whatever you use to heat up the thread. And all I do is I just heat burn this thread, the end of this thread, until it gets close to the hole. And then I'll lick my finger so I don't burn the crap out of it. And then just push that down. 
and then you just do that to both pieces. Press that down. And then grab your little cobbler's hammer and smash these threads down. And as you can see, we've got a nice straight line right there. Perfect on both sides. So what we want to do is burnish our edges again. So you can get your water or your little burnishing agent. And just get your edge nice and nice and wet here. Then get your burnishing tool and then just start rubbing it down. And you want to get the edges and give them a nice little bevel. All right, just like that. Then we'll need to burnish these edges really quick. Then you can also burnish the front and the back. Kind of give it a little bit of a polish. And then what I'll do to finish this off is I've got some Essentially it's a essentially it's a beeswax. A snow seal works really well for the leather. Um, typically I have a heat gun just to warm up the leather a little bit. But that's outside in the shop, so we're just gonna do this really quick. I wouldn't recommend using a torch, but if you're careful with it, you'll be just fine. All you want to do is just heat up this leather a little bit so the snow seal will melt into it. And then once you've got this coated up, just go over it with the heat again. You can also use a hair dryer, it works just fine. And then run back through with the heat, heat it up again, melt it and get it to soak into the leather. Once you've got that in there, let it dry a little bit and you can take a cloth and polish this up again and it'll look nice and pretty. So this is essentially it. If you wanted to, you could wet this up again, put the knife into it and and form it so there's a more defined line around the bolster and handle but I feel this is good it'll go in where it needs to be and it'll stay there